Billy Bad Words, pushing the limit. <laughs> Constantly pushing the limit. To be fair, though, that was that was uh, brought up by you, Ray. Yeah, you started eh. it. I sorry. I sorry. <laughs> Ray's Ray's sneaky, you know, <laughs> sneaky nasty. He's got he's got the probably the most fucked up thoughts floating around in his brain. He just doesn't always articulate it outwards. Cause I can't. I know good words. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom of the totem bowl of dumb. Ray, what do you think of that? Uh, well. uh, I, I think know. good. Me agree with Bill. Look at him. He's watching the fucking game. He's no, watching I'm the not. fucking game. <laughs> I'm listening to you guys talk. Jesus Christ. I want... Let's see what else is on. Golden Girls. Let's see. Let's Jesus. see what 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 we're gonna I'm have to see what to you guys talk. You're talking to fucking Ray. All right. You're supposed we're to just gonna play. Oh man, sorry. We're gonna try and play Rise of the Nazis, but that probably would have distracted <laughs> you as well. It would have brought a tear to Ray's eye. <laughs> That's where I thought Rich was going with that, and then he said to you, Bill. <laughs> Fuck. Oh shit! All right, <laughs> let's see. Let's see. FIA carding. You interested in that shit, Bell? We'll see. All right, welcome to the show. This is the Simple Mind Sports Show. Fat Tuesday. Look around the NBA, uh, November seventeenth. Welcome to the show. As we release this, boys, the NBA offseason has officially begun, and tomorrow is the draft. Feels weird to say that. I mean, we're obviously in a weird year, 2020, COVID, and it's kind of fucking crazy. The Masters just ended in November, which is ridiculous. It's all just a little bit weird. Um, And this NBA offseason promises to be bananas. Absolutely bananas. We've touched on it before. The draft is the 18th. You can start signing players on the 20th. No, I'm sorry, on the 22nd. So free agency technically starts on the 20th. You can start signing players the 22nd. And then training camp starts the 28th. So (laughs) call it two weeks for all this to go down. (laughs) Call it two weeks for everything to go down. Um, I would not be surprised that if with this show being released on Tuesday, if we don't already have a plethora of trades that have gone down. Um, You know, we'll have to catch up on that on Wednesday, but for now, I just want to kind of touch on some of the biggest rumors and see what we think, see what's going to happen. And obviously how that relates to the Celtics. We've kind of chronicled what we think the Celtics should do. Move Gordon Hayward, the miles Turner uh, trade rumors seem like that's the most realistic, the 14th pick and Gordon Hayward, some combination of that for miles Turner, but Drew Holiday is out there. There was that bullshit about the second round pick for Marcus Smart and whatever else. Bottom line is Celtics and Danny Ainge have come out and said they're not looking to add four rookies to this roster. And thank God for that. I don't even think they, I, I literally don't even think they have uh, enough space within the organization to bring on four more players right now. Yeah, I don't think they have the guaranteed contract space. Especially no, they don't. Want to add now, so. so they if they had if they even if they picked all these, they start have to stash, you know, guys Europe. out in Europe like they did a couple years ago. Um, well. So let me start by this: a very very rumor monger that I heard on Felger and Maz. Very very big rumor, but it's the one that is caught my ear most. The juice, and that is, is it's the it call it the juice. The juice is loose in this one. Giannis Antetokounmpo has been in conversation with our very own Celtics very own Jason Tatum. And obviously the uh, situation revolved around Giannis walking into a contract year with the Milwaukee Bucks. Everything points that he's not going to resign with them and he's going to become a free agent next year unless the Bucks, you know, get in front of this uh, and not lose him for nothing and trade him. Does the rumor that Giannis talking to Jason Tatum, does that, what does that mean to you, Raymond? 
I mean, it sounds like he wants out. The important date to remind to remember is December 21st, because if he doesn't sign that extension by December 21st, he's no longer going to be with the Bucks because he will go to free agency. So December 21st is a big date. Obviously, if they don't trade him or he doesn't sign that, he's gone. Mid-season trade, he's gone, because the Bucks have already came out and said that, that if he doesn't sign or says that he's going to be there, they're trading him because they want something in return. Could Boston get him? What would you have to give up to get Giannis over here? Everything? Everything. Everything, everything but Jason Tatum, pretty much. You'd have to get would you? Of- yep. Absolutely. Yep. fucking Lutley. He's by- a player in the NBA right now. Of course, you give up everything to get him. And by everything, I think, I think it's everything minus probably Kemba Walker because I don't think the Bucks want Kemba Walker in that contract. No problem. So you're no. probably yeah, – That's true. And, and the reason why this is not – to me is not total bullshit is because the Bucks have such little leverage that if they're going to trade him, then um, look, Giannis has a ton of control because whoever they trade him for, he has to agree to sign an extension to get the most assets out of it from Milwaukee. Oh, yeah. So they essentially need to trade him to a place that he wants to go. And that conversation needs to be had and it will be a sign and trade. It'll be an extension sign and trade, which is what the Celtics have to do because they will not have the cap space to sign any big time free agent for a very, very long time at this point with Jalen Brown, Kemba Walker, and Jason Tatum, who we expect, hopefully, they will be given a max extension contract. So if it's Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, all three picks this year, probably a first next year, maybe a first a, the two years after that because well, you can't go back to back. Or six. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh. I think if Giannis – MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo, you're talking about a, the third overall pick in Jalen Brown, the sixth overall pick in Marcus Smart, three first-round picks this year, and probably another first-round pick down the line, and then whatever else – whatever uh, low-end talent fodder that the Celtics want to throw in there in your Grant Williams, Robert Williams, whatever, Langford. R- Romeo Langford, Langford whatever. You're giving up the farm in terms of uh, assets and low-end pieces, and to me, yeah, fuck, yes. That, that's the one guy that I'll do that for. Every, anybody else you want to throw me? I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I like Jalen Brown or not. But Giannis next to Tatum? Oh, Shit, that that's kind of perfect. That'd be disgusting. For the next seven, eight years, that'd be fucking nasty duo right there. That's then, kinda, that, you'd have people wanting to come to Boston. You'd want, you'd ha- this would be an attraction to come to. Okay, my next piece in that. Thank you. Good segue, Ray. Uh, we touched on this on the Monday show. The first piece of... Um, legislation, if that's what you want to call it, that the Celtics should do is sign Jason Tatum long-term. Not only because I think that that's the only way that you should move forward building your team. He's a superstar. He can't, you've seen it hasn't worked. Didn't work with Kyrie. Didn't work with Hayward. We'll see about the Kemba thing. You start bringing in all-stars next to Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. It's not functioning. So he's your guy. Start building around him. In order for that to happen, give him the five-year, $175 million contract, whatever the fuck it is. That's on your own side. The other thing that you're seeing, NBA stars like to fuck each other in a good way. They like to talk and, and meet. So if Jason Tatum is one of those guys that starts to have that pull and he's a Boston guy, you're going to start seeing this shit happen like it happens in other places. And if you're, if you're Boston, that doesn't, have, that doesn't come around all that often. So you better do everything you can to, to – uh, Cultivize that and make that make sure that that continues to go on. And if Giannis is is <laughs> if Giannis is one of these guys, holy shit, did you walk into some luck there? Yeah. And apparently, the, one of the biggest things that he's looking for is a Greek is a, a very big Greek uh, population and culture within the city, which I'm Boston right has. Spot. So, doesn't Raymond know. have that too with GMS? <laughs> Raymond New Hampshire with every Greek pizza place. Yeah. Marcos. Hey, hey, Giannis, go check it out on the map. The pizza's okay, but the company's fantastic. Great, great. Co- I like their pizza. They're great pizza. Anyways, sidetracked. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Ray I likes kid, the- always thinking food. Yeah, I get it. Um, all right. Uh, so, Bill, do you think the Bucks trade them, or do you think they go through the season? I think they go through the season. Kind of feels like that. Just to see and just try to kind of throw up a prayer and see if there's a way that you can kind of keep them there. If you make some moves to build around and build around him. You know, kind of give him the sense that like this team's building around me going forward. Then yeah, I think so. I mean, obviously they're a few pieces away. You've been the best team in the East the last two years, but you can't get it done in the playoffs. So you are a you know, you're not a 
great team per se, but if you add the right pieces around him, maybe you can convince him to sign long term there. Yeah, but they can't because they have Middleton to a max deal. They have Brogdon to a big deal. They are uh, they're pretty pinched. And if you're gonna you know you're gonna extend him to a max deal, then you're gonna be more pinched. So. Gone. Is he gone? Um, I'm gone. sorry. Uh, who um, who am I thinking of? The Bledsoe. shitty guy, Bledsoe. Or Bledsoe, yeah. Um, but they've been linked to Victor Oladipo too. There. Yeah, they're going to start doing some trades. I don't know what they have. If you're Milwaukee and you know you have to trade, you have – If I mean, you don't have to. You can let them walk. You can try and do what you're saying, Bill. But if you want to trade them because you want to get something for them, does yeah, that, just, does that done, Celtics yeah. package do it for you? Yeah. If you That's do, a shit ton. The Celtics did, probably have the best did, package. It, it would be Brown and Smart, obviously, and then whatever else you can throw in. Brown smart three this year's three first rounds and maybe Robert Williams to kind of get that another big guy back a young big guy that's cost friendly for the next what three years I think because he's just his second year in the league so I mean those are the type of guys they're going to want to like a full rebuild if you're if you're traded Giannis you're completely and utterly rebuilding so these are the guys you want to get you know Jason uh Sorry, Brown is on a cheap deal too. What did you decide for four for one eighteen? Yeah, so that kicks winner. that kicks in this year. Mm -hmm. Right. So it kicks in this year. So, I mean, he's still another four years. I mean, those are the type of contracts you want to get back. Another young player hasn't even yeah, entered his prime yet. You're looking at a Jalen Brown. It could be maybe a two, maybe a three on a championship team. Chris Middleton's a two, three on a championship team. And then if you get three to four first round draft picks that you can maybe move up and down a board to go try and find someone who can fill that number one gap high up on a jet. Like that's what you're looking for. If you're Milwaukee unless you're, unless and you're not going to get it from a lot of people, you know, there's been rumors golden state wants them. So, I mean, you build something around Draymond, the number two pick and, and throw in Andrew Wiggins back or some shit like that. And you I still think with, the Celtics package is better. I, yeah. I, I, I think so too, but you know, again, it's signability, right? So if you're controlling where you're going because you want to sign oh, a long-term deal, you get rid of Andrew Wiggins, who's on that weird max deal. I think he's getting 145 million. You have Draymond who, who signed for close to a max deal. You get out of those guys, you can get him to a super max, right? Or, or he can't sign a super max. Well, he can because he got traded and he's been MVP. So he's in line for that super max deal. So then you have him, Clay and, and Steph Curry. Dude, that's your best team in, in basketball. I don't know if you can sign a super max if you get traded. I think you got to be with the same team. But regardless, what's the Greek population San Francisco? A lot of Asians. Um, all right. Well, that's interesting. The one deal that has basically been reported is uh, a little bit lower end, but uh, your championship Lakers are trading the 28th overall pick for Dennis Schroeder from Oklahoma City. Shouldn't the Celtics be in on this? Isn't this like the exact guy the Celtics need coming off the bench? Can they? Because is Glass Gordon holding the, the Celtics balls, per se, right now without signing this player option right now? Why does that for... matter? Money. They're, it doesn't matter. They're over the luxury over tax. The At this anyway. point, they're just spending. Yeah. So I don't know what Schroeder's contract is, but you have the 26th pick if you're the Celtics. You could have even done the 14th, but I don't think it's the right but move. But they're, the they're, they're eating Danny Green. They're they're eating Danny Green's contract. We can't I don't think they're going right to flip Celtics. Danny Green, they said. Why don't you like it for the Celtics, Bill? I just think you have a bigger need in the front court, and I think if you're going to focus on trades – Focus on getting, again, a Miles Turner or someone that's going to help in the front court. Worry about your bench after. I think the biggest need you need is a front court guy. If you, if he's there, go and get him. I don't think this is the first move the Celtics need to make. The first move should be a big guy. Are you, aren't we assuming that Gordon Hayward and the 14th pick, pick are gone for Miles Turner? I think so, yeah. So if the what, 20, do you, what, do you, what do you have if to the give 26, up? If the 26th, you have the 26th. The Lakers give him the 28th. I know, but what do you have to give up in return? I'm obviously, Danny Green's going to eat a contract, but what do you have to give back to match his deal? Because again, go find me, go find me some uh, end of the bench contracts that you can pile up. They're, the the Oklahoma City does not want that. That's just a money deal. They're going to flip Danny Green. They don't want Danny Green. They're just going to flip him. They're just going to make the money work. So, do the Celtics have contracts to make the money work? I don't know. I don't know how much Danny Straight Green is would working. Be a nice bench piece for the Celtics. I fucking love Danny Green. Maybe they get him. Either way, I, as you know, you still when you start seeing these deals, I am concerned about Danny Ainge in this offseason not pulling these goddamn triggers. And hopefully, you know, we we there's always a ton of smoke around this team and over the last several years there's been no fire. So, this year there has to be something that goes down. And Dennis Schroeder, it would be perfect off the bench here. Perfect off the bench. Good score. Um, okay, defender, really good playmaker, um, and a ton of energy. 
big energy guy. So I just want to bring that. Let's touch on the big. Let's touch on the big one. Let's touch on the juicy, fat gonad rumors going around, revolving around the Houston Rockets. And the latest, as we record this on Sunday, is James Harden is getting a little bit more. I think what I read was cozy or uh, interested in the idea of being traded to the Brooklyn Nets. Please God, please God. Holy Mary, make this happen because I need to see that implosion of those three bitches happen more than anything in the NBA. Yeah, Bill, I, I know you like the talent. I know you like the talent. What do you think? It, it would scare me as just being a Celtics fan again, the one off that they can learn how to play together because the talent alone is disgusting. I mean, you're looking at, you know, three of the top seven, eight guys in the league, depending on where you value Kyrie. You know, Kevin Durant still – I get it, he's coming off an injury, but he's still a top-five player in this league. He's disgusting. So if that if they those guys could ever figure it out and make it work, whew, look out there. But, I mean, and they have the pieces to get them. Levert's there that they can move, Din Whittley or whatever his name is. Din Whittle, Din Whitty. And they have another guy, Johnson, or I think his name is – Jackson yeah. or something like that. One of those guys. So those are three nice pieces. If I'm, if I'm Houston – looking at making a move and kind of blowing everything up. Those are nice three pieces that come and back. And they got a so, lottery pick where yeah. they're somewhere in the lottery. Um, yeah, they, they got a nice package of young of young players and a lottery pick that they can move. No lottery pick. They, were, they made the playoffs. They were the eighth seed or the seventh seed. Oh, yeah, they got, they got beat early, right? Yeah, they were the seventh or eighth seed. Yeah. So they're, um, they're picking like, I don't know, 15 to 20 in that range somewhere. Ray, James Harden on the Nets. Comedy. Your- <laughs> Comedy. There's only one basketball, and you've got three guys that demand the ball at all times. I don't understand how that's going to work out. Poor Steve Nash. Steve Nash, one of my favorite players growing up now, is the coach of that team. Oh, God. I feel Very so well bad. put. Poor Steve Nash. I'll, I- you'll never get a head coaching job after this. He's going to be there for a year, and he's going to get fired because they're not going to do shit. And these three baby back bitches are going to fucking complain because they're not getting enough shots and not enough minutes and not enough touches. Uh, it's going to be a fucking disaster, but as a Celtics fan, I'll be laughing my balls off. Yeah, and he's leaving the strip-up capital of the world in Houston. You know, his jersey hangs in Houston strip clubs for the amount of money he spent in there. So, I mean, if he's going – That's no Brooklyn, small thing. No. No, they've retired his jersey. Yeah. The amount of time and money he spent in this that strip club. So, what does Brooklyn have to offer? Hipsters. I mean, <clears throat> yeah. You know, it is New York City. You can pretty much get anything you want in New York City. But – uh yeah, I don't know. I, I like I look at it and go, okay, Durant worked in Golden State with Steph and Clay. How do they compare to Harden and Kyrie? Opposites. Different. Yeah. Much, much, much. I don't much think different. Thomas Thompson and um, you know, Curry, they're not selfish players. Like they don't No, mind but Curry and... is a ball dominant player. You're I mean, right. he's the point guard of the team. And Durant was able to come in there and and Curry, to your point, Bill, was unselfish in point where end of the game, Kevin Durant's the best player on the court. Find him, give him the ball. He's six eleven. Curry, you're six three. So yeah, there's 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 differences there. I don't believe Kyrie Irving has that in him to go, I'm not the best player on the court. We're down two. Where's Kevin? Where's K D? And for sure. Fuck no, James Harden is that guy. Hell no, he's not that guy. No. So like you talk, you know, if, if James Harden is supposed to be the Clay Thompson of that, Clay Thompson can be a spot up shooter, can be a lockdown defender. When he's hot, give him the ball. When he's not, he's, he's okay, not getting, the, not getting the touches. James Harden needs the ball in his hands 24 7. I don't mm-hmm. see him working on any other team where he is not the focal point of the offense. I don't, I don't see that happening. So please, God, send him to Brooklyn because I think they're worse with James Harden than just with Kyrie and KD, which is better for our Celtics, obviously. Uh-huh. And especially that supporting cast in, in Brooklyn is good. They, yeah. gave, you know, they gave people problems. They gave the Celtics problems. Didn't when he did Whittle and, and, and Levert put up 50 on you. Put up 50 in like the fourth fucking quarter or whatever what it was last year. Yeah. So, yeah, get, put, put James Harden on Brooklyn so that place can burn, burn an ashy death. Um, the other guy in Houston trying to shoot his way out of town. Obviously, the, like these fucking players. Why would anybody want these guys? Russell Westbrook wants out of town. The juiciest rumor for that is essentially swapping out Paul George and Russell Westbrook with the Clippers. How Sending Westbrook to the Clippers. 
I don't know. I don't, I'd rather at Paul George probably at this point. I don't even know. I don't think Kawhi and Westbrook are, could be great together. Yeah. Be Hasn't Paul bad. George fallen off the – his uh, – look, he shot his way out of Indiana, played a year and a half in Oklahoma City, shot his signed way out of Oklahoma and City. signed an extension. Don't forget that. He signed a max deal there after he came from Indiana and then fucking demanded a trade out of nowhere because Kawhi went to fucking L.A. Got Doc fired. Yep. Essentially got daughter. Doc fired. Isn't Paul, isn't Paul George becoming a bit of a cancer at this point? Yep. If so why I, would you if, trade that? Why would you do that? Well, if you're the Clippers, well, if, why would you, yeah, you could. If you're the Clippers, Kawhi you get too. him out. You could yeah, but why Kawhi would you trade too. him for Russ? Russ is the same player. I'd re- I don't think Russ is a cancer. I think I lo- I like Russell Westbrook as a competitor and athlete. On the- I just don't. I don't think that he's a good enough player for the money that he's getting, and I don't know if he knows how to fit within a team. But I don't think he's a. I don't think that he's like a uh, an attitude kind of cancer guy. I think he's a. I think he's a badass. I fucking. I really like Wessel Westbrook from that standpoint. But he shoots like thirty percent from three. He's not a good shooter. He's kind of a one trick pony on offense. He's not a. He's not a distributor. It's just you give him the ball and he can get to the rack. Yeah. So if he can go on a team and understand his role, then that's one thing. But he's getting paid thirty nine million dollars. Where the fuck it is like. He's going to be expected to be the number one guy, and I don't think he has the skill set to be that. But if you put him next to Kawhi Leonard, uh, yeah, you 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 have you have one of the few guys in the NBA who's undoubtedly better than you, and you and you can, you know, give him the ball when needed. You know that that's what I think of that. And if if Paul you know if Paul George is going to become this, it also you know translated onto the court. He stunk. Because he's a pouty little whiny bitch. So yeah, if I'm the Clippers, I do the deal. But I think that Houston's asking for more than just Paul George. They want a bunch of shit there. Uh, but we'll see. There's new. There's new uh, leadership in in Clippers land. They're also the looking one. at trying to get CP3 over to, to the Clippers. Uh, nice. The other the other rumor nice I heard about the other rumor I heard for Russ was going to Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte. I, I just heard the Charlotte rumor. Yeah. Too. Which I think would be pretty cool. Charlotte a, actually making a move and getting a top ten player in the NBA. He's a Jordan brand guy too. Mm-hmm. That'd be great. It'd be death. It'd be a death sentence for for us. Why? Be done. Because what is Charlotte ever gonna do? Nothing. Yeah, you can make that an attraction. All you gotta do is bring big names over there, and that's an attraction now. I guess. I guess. They gotta but what we're you know, we're seeing it's gotta be the right names. It's got to be the right names. The, these guys are trying to follow in the footsteps of LeBron James. Well, guess what? LeBron James is one of the best basketball players the world has ever seen, and he's been able to make whatever work because he can, he can do anything that the other player can't do. So he's been able to do it with Dwayne Wade as a wing player as B. He's been able to do it with Kyrie as a point guard as his B player, and he's been able to do it with Anthony Davis as a center. He's, he's, taken, he's built his teams and played opposite to every other position on the court. And all these other players are trying to do that, and they can't replicate what LeBron James can do, and you see it fall apart over and over and over again. Yeah. So if you're, if you're Russell Westbrook, I would be, you know, why would you go to Charlotte if you could just stay in Houston? Just blow out everybody. I bet if you see Harden go, uh, Westbrook will probably stay in Houston. I would, yeah, you would have to I imagine. I agree to that, yeah. You'd have to James imagine Harden. Houston would be Houston gets like three to five years worth of assets and picks and shit to to just rebuild and go nuts. Because yeah. you're talking about two MVPs, you're trying to trade two MVPs. <laughs> you gotta get a haul. So yeah, I think if one goes, you get a Paul George stay. haul. If you think what they got from the Clippers for Paul George, for Oklahoma City, I mean that's what you'd ideally get for either Westbrook or um, Harden. Yeah. Is there like what? It, I haven't thought about this, so maybe this is a bad question to ask. But is there an ideal fit for what Russell Westbrook and that style of play? I like. I kind of. He's someone on the radio the other day said he's a better version of Marcus Smart because he cause he's a better scorer, and he's obviously not as good as the defense. But I mean, if you kind of compare their games, it, it's very comparable. So if you want to get a guy that could play the way he needs to play, he'd fit right in with Boston. I think. I compl- I disagree, one thousand percent. That's cool. Well, I don't know anything about basketball, so I know. 
for we've you know it's Jason Tatum's team. Russell Westbrook comes here, it's Russell Westbrook's team. That's problem number one, controversy. N- number two, you got to play next to Kemba Walker, who is a ball dominant point guard, same as Russell Westbrook. Number three, Russell Westbrook's going to want the ball at the end of the game, and he stinks at the end of the game. So no, so I don't Jason Tatum. I don't I got, want him right I got now. Team. Right now, Bill, you're the Jason Tatum guy. That's you right. can't be saying that shit, right? New Orleans. Don't hate it. That'd be him and Zion. Yeah, just Miami. run. Miami. Miami. No. No. <laughs> I like New Orleans. Him, Zion, uh, Ball, and uh, Ball coming Ingram. Off the bench. Ball coming off the bench. Ingram, Zion, and Russ as your starters. Oof. I don't even know if he has to come off the bench. You just run. Your whole lot, like, oh, yeah, go run. Go Terrible perch, defense, but run. Go perch D'Antoni from – from uh, <laughs> New Jersey, from Brooklyn, yeah. and just run and don't play yeah. defense. Although Lonzo yeah, Ball's turning into a Lonzo Ball a and Russell Westbrook are there. really good defensive players. Yeah, that Ball's would be good. Into a nice little player down there for New Orleans, and he's still got plenty of room to grow too. Like he's. I still I mean, can't stand looking at his shot. I just. I can't stand looking at anything with that has to do with that family. Fuck him. Speaking of that, nice, nice, nice. nice uh, segue, Bill. Fucking producer Bill Lamelo. Your boy Lamelo expected to go number one overall on a scale of one to ten. How big a mistake is this for the New York Knicks? Twelve. Knicks? Why would it be the Knicks? I'm sorry. Who's first overall? The Timberwolves. Uh, Timberwolves. Timberwolves. The, who's got Detroit at like three? What did I see? The Knicks are trying to trade up to get Lamelo. Anyway, no, that was Lamelo's in, just gonna fall to him because he sucks. That was in my head. These expected Anthony to go Edwards, first Anthony, overall. Anthony Edwards or James Wiseman from Memphis are the two guys that are gonna go one. You putting that down in the ledger? Yeah. No, Wiseman, yeah, he's probably the top player in there. Yeah. And I don't know much about college basketball, but I know he's been great. Do you Edwards? draft do you draft LaMelo at all? No. No. But the talent alone, he's better than his brother. And that was the com- talk earlier in his career that he was the better the best one. They if he's better than Russell, they got D'Angelo Russell in uh Minnesota. Why would you trade why would you draft? If you're the Knicks, do you draft LaMelo? Nah. Are paired with RJ Barrett? If LaMelo is better than Lonzo then that's a good NBA player. I just hate the ball, the fucking ball brand and those, that team and those guys. And I get that it's all died down at this point. And now that he's out of LA, it's, you know, it's kind of uh, gone, but uh, that, that whole, that whole scene of big baller brand and those assholes is stuck in my mind. And the YouTube the videos that were shoved down our throat of this LaMelo kid spotting up at, at half court and making one. And then the videos that came off after where he missed like 17 of them in a row, just like the last type of guy I want on my team. Yeah. Perfect for the Knicks. Yeah. Yeah, Perfect he, for the Knicks. He bypassed his senior year at college to go to New Zealand to play professionally so he could get into the draft this year. He never even went to college. That's what I'm saying. He bypassed his senior year of high school. Neither did I'm you, sorry, Did I say college? Did you I say said college? college. I'm sorry, yeah, senior year of high school and went to New Zealand to play professional so he could get into the draft. Well, he played in Europe, too. Remember, they owned Hey, that, did like, you guys Croatia go to college? Or something? No. No. Look at you know, us. Also, you guys turned college. out okay. Wayne Gretzky. Money Money Bill. <laughs> Kobe Bryant. Tracy McGrady. <laughs> Kevin Garnett. Watching a lot of The Office there, huh, Bill? It's on Comedy Central all the time. So when I get home from work some days, I just throw it on it for a bad No, it's good. Noise. I mean, I've watched the whole series probably four times through. Just oh, yeah. as white noise. Park and Rec. Parks and Rec, too, is a good one. Can yeah, I throw like two other Rec. guys that should be uh, – Yes, be please, out. please. Uh, Cole Anthony from UNC, point guard. Uh, he's going to fall a lot in the draft, but he's a, one, one of those guys to look out for. And also, RJ Hampton. He, got, he was one of those guys that left his uh, senior year of high school, went to New Zealand to play, but he had a hip injury. He got hurt. So he, his stock dropped, but he's one of those guys that was like one of the top five prospects coming out of the country. Watch out for him. Do you want the Celtics to draft anybody? No. no. Thank you. Um, here's, one, here's something that's not being talked about at all, which is kind of baffling to me. The Lakers have room for a max player, and no one's talking about who they're going to sign. Yeah, it's oh. weird. Are they going to sign somebody? Anthony Davis. The Rosen's the one guy that you keep – you keep here and come up. You no, have to imagine the that they're going to get somebody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Rondo's gone now. So, I mean, I, I, I like Rondo for that team. You know, you, you saw Rondo. He's a big game player in the playoffs, and you just replace him with Schroeder, better talent. At this point, he's younger. But 
you saw it when he came back from injury. Like he he was fucking awesome for that team in, well, the, in run. the championship run. So I mean, even if you you want to talk about a guy a Celtics could target, I would take Rondo back in a heartbeat. I know he's kind of a cunt, but veteran leadership. He's got two two NBA titles. He could he could be one of those guys that tell Marcus Smart to shut the fuck up, and he'd be a nice piece coming off the bench, and he could play big game minutes down the stretch as a true point guard over like Kemba. Oh, I don't think Kemba's a true point guard the way I love Rondo is. I love uh, Rajon Rondo as a as a uh, veteran piece in the Celtics team. I think the problem is Rajon Rondo does not love himself as a veteran piece in the Celtics team. Yep. He probably considers himself a point guard, starting point guard in an NBA franchise, wants the money for it, and wants to uh, – you know, what wants to continue doing what he's done his whole entire career and buck the trend and be a me first guy. And that's why he's gained, garnished the reputation that he has. But you're right. In the playoffs, in the playoffs, he's, you know, he's the Julian Edelman of the NBA playoffs. He's a fucking Hall of Famer in the playoffs and uh, not a Hall of Famer somewhere else. Ray, do you have something else? I was just going to say, Rondo's playing for his last contract, so he wants big money and he wants to start. So he's going go to go to the highest. start him if you got rid of. You know Gordon Hayward. You can move Kemba to your two guard. You know, and then there's you. you there's your. You could start. That's small. Him next That's a small. You're already playing court. your small lineup with with Gordon Hayward when you start him. You know that's that's kind of a small. If you trade right Gordon there. Hayward, your starting lineup is going to be Kemba, Marcus, Jalen, and Jason. And, My, and so, if you sign Rondo and you move Marcus to the bench, then you're you're essentially doing the same thing. Yeah, it's not so, and he can't uh, score. Yeah, he's not that good of a scorer. I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, it'd be, it'd be fun to see him here. I think he would be good in the right situation. The Celtics are they're not they're not in the greatest spot roster wise. I mean, Kemba Walker is a Kemba Walker is a weird piece right now, and they're kind of stuck with him for at least one more year. At least one more year, they're stuck with him. Mm-hmm. They can't go dealing that guy right now. They, they'll never fucking sign a free agent again. Um, that's all I got. Anything else popping up on your guys' radar? No, can't wait for this next. No Billy weeks. bombs. It's been quiet Sunday outside of the Schroeder deal. That's about all I've I've read. I haven't really yeah. been on the the Twitter today much. I you can't, don't do I, social media much. Don't worry, Bill. I can't imagine. I can. Do you think? Uh, do you think Danny Ainge has a plan? If Giannis gets the free agency, to move enough pieces to be able to sign him. I think we get Giannis only by trade. I think that that's – yeah, I think that that's right. Yeah, I do too. I don't think free agency-wise you'd be able to – But snatch there has been you talk move, that he's going to try to clear the cap space. I mean, that – Well, that's what I'm talk. asking. That's what I'm – if you clear Hayward, Hayward this year, you sign Tatum, Jalen's not at max, and Smart's not max, everybody else is essentially non-guaranteed, then you just have to move Kemba next year. Then you have the space, I think. Then I'm pretty sure you have the space to sign Giannis. Yeah, but still, is that an attraction for him to come? Oh, if you ha- if you have Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, oh fuck yeah! And you still got whatever's left of Kemba. No, you'd have to oh, move have Kemba to, to sign Kemba. Giannis. Oh yeah, you would on a free agent deal. If you have that's if, fine. It's easier to do that in his third year instead of his entering his second year. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. You'll you'll Kemba should have some value if he plays well. And I don't think anyone's going to fault you for dumping him to get Giannis into Kokumpo. No, so hopefully you, you maintain some PR and uh, you well, get rid of a 32-year-old point guard with a bad knee. Yeah, but that helps you with the free agency. You get the greatest player in the league. Yeah, the and then you have Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Giannis. Yeah. Shit. It's a pretty good big three, if you ask me. I mean, I, I don't know. I, you know, that screams pipe dream to me. That stupid fucking rumor that he was talking to Tatum now has me all excited about this great white whale, the next great white whale for Danny Ainge to go snag. Son of a bitch. We're going to get disappointed. We're going to be very disappointed. Oh, of course. By the time this airs on Tuesday, by the time we are back recording, we're going to be disappointed. You want to talk about disappointment? You should see how your Buffalo Bills just lost. I saw. I saw the, the update. By how much? Two. Is that a push? I don't know. I gotta look. All right. This has been the Civil Mind Sports Show, Fat Tuesday edition, November seventeenth. We are uh, about to fall into the midst of NBA fury, and uh, I'm excited for it. Me too. Bill, Me too. how about you? Me too. 
Good. Good for you, Bill. Thanks for paying attention today. We'll see you tomorrow for Wednesday edition. Bye bye. Bye bye. Motocross and uh, you can t- go cards. Put- Do not do it for Bill. <laughs> no. You can put the go-karts on the screen. You know, this is what happens. We start talking basketball. Billy's eyes go somewhere else. He starts smoking the vape, Push. puffing around. And I, as soon as I saw the goddamn notification, Bill's lose on Hail Mary. Uh, you know, I knew, where, I knew where your head was the last five minutes. 30 seconds they score a touchdown and let Kyle Murray throw a 44-yard touchdown to DeAndre Hopkins to win the game. Typical Bill's fashion. This is a very hard thing for me to be a Bills fan. It's very hard, very, easy very, for me to be very a Cardinals much, fan right now. I very, very much want to go toot toot on this is what the goddamn Bills are going to be. But they're my team now, so I have to have faith that they can figure it out. But for the love of God, they're never going to figure it the fuck out to the Buffalo Bills. To the no, Buffalo it's... goddamn Bills. Yep.